Hello students, myself Dr. Sachin Kapoor and I wish you a very warm welcome to this session of Zoology Lectures. The topic of our discussion today is muscular tissue. As you can see, muscular tissue we have divided into three broad categories, means there are three types of muscles, skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles and smooth muscles. Skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles are also called striated muscles or striped muscles. When you use the word striations, that means when you look these muscle fibers under a simple microscope, these show alternate light and dark bands, which we'll discuss. Now, because of those bands, we call these muscles as striated muscles. Whereas smooth muscles, these are unstriped or non-striped. As far as their control or the regulation is concerned, smooth muscles as well as cardiac muscles are involuntary. That means they are not under your conscious control. Skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles. That means they are under your conscious control. We will first discuss skeletal muscles in detail. Now, the first question is that why skeletal muscles? They are called skeletal muscles. The reason is these are attached to bones. Let's see the generalized structure of a long bone. Say this is a long bone. And as I said, the skeletal muscles, they are called skeletal because they are attached to bones. Say this is a muscle and this is a bone. The tissue which connects muscle with the bone is called tendon. So here with this blue color, I am showing what? This is tendon. And this structure is muscle. So the skeletal muscles are attached with bones by tendons. When the muscle contracts, that results in movement. Please remember that muscles also store large amount of glycogen. So muscle and bone attached with tendon. That's the reason they are called skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles, they are also present in tongue. So we are writing the various locations where the skeletal muscles are present. These are present in tongue. These are present in pharynx. Upper part of esophagus. External anal sphincter, which regulates the passage of feces. External urethral sphincter. Sphincter is a ring of muscles. Other than these, the diaphragm, which is the main breathing muscle that moves up and down when we breathe. Diaphragm is also a sheet of skeletal muscle, but it is regulated involuntarily by the medulla region of brain. We do have voluntary control over breathing because we can hold our breath, say, for short duration. Right. So these are the various locations where the skeletal muscles are present. Now, as you can see, they're present in tongue, pharynx, upper part of esophagus, external anal sphincter. That means entry to the digestive system and exit from the digestive system is under the voluntary control of the animal. Right. Now, next we'll discuss that uh, what is the basic structure of a skeletal muscle, how the muscle develops in an embryo. Now let's see the development of skeletal muscle. How a skeletal muscle develops. Now as you can see here that uh, these cells, myoblasts, these are the muscle forming cells. Myoblasts are present during embryonic conditions. That is when the embryo is developing in the uterus of the mother, myoblast cells are present. These are muscle forming cells. Many myoblasts, they fuse to form a single elongated cylindrical structure that is called muscle fiber or myocyte that can be up to 30 to 40 centimeters long. So a single muscle fiber is a single muscle cell which is formed by fusion of many myoblasts. This happens during embryonic conditions. Now in this diagram, you can see that I have shown 
many nuclei in this elongated cylindrical structure. That means the skeletal muscle fibers, they are multinucleated or syncytium. Because they are formed by fusion of many myoblasts, so there are many nuclei. The nucleus is not located in the center. Nuclei are peripherally located. The cytoplasm of the muscle fiber is called sarcoplasm, as you can see here. The plasma membrane is sarcolemma. And the mitochondria, which are the powerhouse, the mitochondria are called sarcosomes. Endoplasmic reticulum is the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it stores calcium ions. Calcium ions play a very important role in muscle contraction, which we'll discuss in the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. The muscle fiber is further covered by a connective tissue layer which we have shown here in red color. That connective tissue layer is called endomycium. Next is muscle fasciculus. Let's understand what is a muscle fasciculus. Many such muscle fibers, they group to form muscle fasciculus. Say for example, I am holding this marker in my hand. The single marker is a single muscle fiber. This is another muscle fiber. And you imagine that there are so many muscle fibers forming a complete bundle that is covered by a connective tissue layer called perimysium. So that structure is muscle fasciculus. Many such muscle fasciculi, they group to form muscle. If there is one muscle fasciculus, you imagine there is another massive, uh, muscle fasciculus. They all are covered by a connective tissue layer called epimysium and that is what is muscle. Let me give a quick recap of what we have discussed. The development of the skeletal muscle. Many myoblasts, they fuse to form a single elongated cylindrical structure which is called muscle fiber, which is covered by endomycium. Many muscle fibers, they group to form muscle fasciculus, which is further covered by perimysium. Many such muscle fasciculi, they group to form muscle, which is further covered by epimysium. Now, these myoblast cells, they are present only during embryonic conditions. After birth of the baby, very few myoblasts, they persist in the muscle. These cannot form new muscle fibers. These can cause the minor repair of the damaged muscle fibers. These are also called satellite cells. Now, the question is that why the skeletal muscle fibers, they are called striated muscle fibers. As I told you that the striations are because of myofilaments, the myosin and actin filaments, which are arranged in such a manner that they give the appearance of light and dark bands. Let's see that why skeletal muscle fibers, they are called striated. What is the reason that they are called striated? When you observe them under simple microscope, the skeletal muscle fibers show alternate light and dark bands. These light and dark bands are formed due to arrangement of myofilaments, which we'll discuss shortly. So I'm labeling this as dark band. The dark band is also termed A band. A stands for anisotropic band. This is with ref reference to their refractive index. This is a light band. The light band is also termed I band. I stands for isotropic. So there is isotropic band. There is an isotropic band. That's the reason why they are called striated. Now, how these light and dark bands are formed. Let's see the ultra structure of a muscle fiber, skeletal muscle fiber. Say this is skeletal muscle fiber. This is one muscle fiber, which is a single cell. This muscle fiber has organelles, which are called myofibrils. This is one myofibril I have shown. This is another myofibril right so a muscle fiber has what it has myofibrils there are many myofibrils in a muscle these myofibrils they have myofilaments now in this diagram i'll show you myofilaments we'll use two different colors to show the different 
myofilaments. There are thick myofilaments and there are thin myofilaments. The myosin filaments and the actin filaments. Now, we'll take one myofibril out of this muscle fiber and see the enlarged view of that myofibril. So, this is one myofibril. As I said, it has myofilaments. With black color, I am showing actin filaments. And with this blue color, I am showing myosin filaments. This is how the myofilaments are arranged in a muscle fiber to give the appearance of light and dark bands. So, this single myofibril. And what are these? These are myofilaments. And as I told you, there are two types of myofilaments, myosin and actin. Let's see them here. Say, these are ones which we have shown with the blue color. This is actin. There is slight overlapping of myosin and actin. The myosin or the thick filaments, their diameter is twice as that of the thin myofilaments. The thin myofilaments not only have actin, they have other proteins also, troponin and tropomyosin. So I'm labeling this filament as actin filament and the one which we have shown with blue color is the myosin filament or the thick filament. Students, let, let's have a quick review of what we have discussed. We have seen that why skeletal muscle fibers, they are called striated. The reason is, when you observe them under simple microscope, they show alternate light and dark bands. Why light and dark bands are formed? The arrangement of myosin and actin is such that it gives an appearance that certain areas are darker and certain areas are lighter. Dark band is also called A band. There's an easy way to remember this thing. If you look at the spelling of dark, it is D-A-R-K. After D alphabet, you have A. So, dark band is A band. Light band, L-I-G-H-T. After L, there is alphabet I. That means light band is I band. That's a simple way to remember. Light band is I band. Dark band is A band. This is with reference to their refractive index. A stands for anisotropic. I stands for isotropic. A muscle fiber has many myofibrils. As we can see here, we have taken one myofibril out of this muscle fiber and we have seen that how the myofilaments are arranged. So, that was about the skeletal muscle fibers, how they develop and what is their ultra structure.